Here we go. How's everybody doing? We're back with another podcast, and I'm on a remote location, but uh, West Coast Digger, Texas Digger, they're currently back at home. How's everybody doing? Good. Uh, good. Multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> spending time with the kids, spending time with you two, and it's like, wow, I'm, I'm on overload right now. <laughs> there you go. So I thought we'd jump on another one of these. We kind of tested out a new platform, a way to record these. So hopefully this is uh, something a little more uh, caught up with the rest of the podcast world and will give us an opportunity to also do some of these live and include comments and include some more current, uh, as it happens, viewership. I'm currently at Rockingham Dragway. Came up here tonight after work because I'm going to jump into... Uh, they did race today, <clears throat> but they are going to be racing tomorrow and Sunday as they kick off their bracket points series. And uh, so hopefully we'll get lucky and go go a few rounds. But I thought we'd get together and kind of chat where we're all at with our racing programs as, you know, the season really kind of springs off. So, uh, Dad, you just you kind of got done with Phoenix. You're in the in-between before heading to Pomona. So what's that like as far as your schedule? And I mean, you're just traveling uh, as the opener here. I mean, you've got a lot of racing, but you're like putting in a lot of road miles, air, air miles. Yeah, I burned a lot of gas in Phoenix for sure. Um, that went pretty well. Uh, you know, I, I failed to win that race by losing in the final that was disappointing in a very strange race because uh we dialed exactly the same and the guy with a 630 car dialed 670 with me and i didn't know why i figured he had some problem with his car but i don't think his car was wounded as much as he thought it was so you know, I felt like we kind of left together. I saw a picture just today, actually, that Bob Johnson, the track photographer, took uh, showing us leaving the line. And he's got like a wheel on me. He had a 008 to my 16. But of course, you know, his car is 60 foot, like 960 something. And I was like 101, 60 foot. <laughs> but um, he just went out there and put a wheel on me all the way down. And it was so strange because he was like two car links on me at one point and pulling away. I thought, what is this guy doing? Uh, pro charger car. And uh, he just started backing into me. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to go all out. I should be fairly close to my dial. And if he can razor thin, cut it close, more power to him. Well, he did. <laughs> so wow. that was disappointing. The next day, I, I went out the second round, just kind of the opposite. In the final, I thought the car would run 670 because it had been running 71, 72 during the day. And we ran at night and it was cooler. So, but it went 73. It was the slowest run of my whole weekend. Mm. That was just kind of weird. The 60 foot time wasn't that far off. So I just kind of chalked that up to, I had, uh, changed the jets in the car and jetted it down. It was maybe too lean. It didn't like the cooler temperatures. So mm. uh, next day, car, same thing. It ran like 72 to qualify. And then we ran and uh, I had my opponent by a little bit and let off just at the first light figured i didn't need to drag the brake because it chattered the tires a little bit at the start and i thought oh i'm not going to run my dial i was dialed 72. well i lifted it went uh, 71 with a three he broke out by seven thou so i really kind of had a good weekend but i was scratching my head as to what's going on here you know yeah so but uh i drove over to near the Ontario airport, parked all my stuff at an RV lot, mm -hmm. flew home, and I've been home since. And Tuesday, I fly back to uh, Ontario, and then it's like a 10-minute drive over to the Fairplex and race Pomona. Then I'll go back to the RV lot after Pomona and uh, 
fly home again for a week and then fly back <laughs> uh, wow. Easter evening, actually. I'll fly back and then I'll uh, drive over to Phoenix and race over in Phoenix. And then after I'm done with that, uh, I'll drive to Las Vegas and race back-to-back -back weekends in Vegas. Wow. Yeah, so it's a lot of miles and a lot of travel, but you're getting in a lot of racing and all of that. Yeah, so I guess it's worth it. Unusual to get so many laps in so early in the year, but you know, I figured I would do that. Uh, and quite honestly, if 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 all works out well, I'll be able to do all that. If something happens to the motor, uh, uh, then I'll I won't be doing all that. But uh, when I get done, if I go through it all and I get done with Vegas, then the motor's coming out. Uh, I'll have about 80. Yeah, it depends on how many rounds you go, but I'll have somewhere between 80, 85 runs maybe on those rods, and it's time to get rid of them. So yeah. uh, when I bought that motor, it only had eight runs on it, but uh, I think they used the valves over again. The wrist pins were used again. The pistons and rods were new, but you know I don't know much more about that. So it's just got to come out of there and go for a total rebuild, which is going to be pricey. But uh, you know I I can't afford to grenade that thing. At uh, the Phoenix Double Divisional, there seemed to be a lot of breakage. That seemed to be what I noticed guys are hurting parts hurting motors had to had to duck out and it sounds like some of that may be spilling over to pomona you were telling me the other day you're watching the entry list and it's a little smaller than you thought well it filled out fairly fast they got 36 cars but then uh, i don't know by the middle of this week i i just happened to look at the list and see that you know they limited to 36 cars it's down to 33 right now, and it's been that way since Wednesday. Here is Friday, huh. uh, and nobody else has jumped in, so I'm really kind of surprised. I know a couple people that were broken in Phoenix, and so they pulled out, which makes sense. They just probably couldn't get parts and pieces and get it all back together in time. But I figured there's some local people down in uh, the L.A. area that would probably jump in at the last minute they still might but right now it's just holding at 33 and uh one of the things i did after the phoenix race was uh, i parked in a camping place in quartzite and put my bottle holder on my nitrous bottle holder on and put uh, remounted some solenoids from my other motor and stuff uh did some plumbing, did a bunch of wiring, and tested it all out electronically. Uh, so I was ready to spray because uh, most of the cars in Pomona are much faster than me. It's like, man, I'm going to have to run a high 40 probably to get in. Um, but now it's looking like, well, maybe I don't have to spray at all because there might be at least two people I could probably outrun or who knows, you know, how sometimes people have problems, but we're going to get three hits at it. So I don't know. So I have to make up my mind whether I'm going to just not spray and see how it goes, or maybe spray the first hit just to see what it does do to it, because I have no idea. I mean, I haven't sprayed this motor at all. And, and then I put the smallest jetting I can put into it because I just wanted to pick up a tenth. So, you know, uh, I, I may do that yet, but I have to make up my mind here pretty soon. We'll see. Yeah. There, there's as quickly as people pull out, uh, people might jump in, but there might be also somebody because there's at least one guy on the list that grenaded his motor uh, in Phoenix, and he's still entered. That was John Freer. I saw him on NHRA TV just grenade that thing, man, like about 300 feet out. He That Boom. was transmission. That was? 
That was all transmission fluid. Yeah, it really, really? smoked all yeah. the way down the track. The it looked like he scattered the thing, but I yeah, yeah I oh, heard wow. it was transmission. Yeah, but Grant Dury, he he blew up his primary motor last November in Vegas. Then he went to Pomona and won the race. But then uh, he bought somebody else's motor in between and won the race with that motor. But then he didn't do anything over the winter. And then he goes to Phoenix and blows that one up. So he's got two blown up motors. So he's still entered. So, you know, he's either, you know, going to run in somebody else's car or who knows what people are doing but i don't know well, speaking of spraying some of the giggle juice that kind of leads into matt out there in texas uh you're getting ready to possibly shoot some of that on your motor and you've got a race coming you were supposed to race this weekend right i was going to leave this morning but um the the place that i keep my trailer at it's it's a big, cool yard. I mean, it's, it's cool, but there's no pavement. It's all dirt and rock and everything else. And when it rains, it gets muddy and the car's in the air and I have to let the trailer back down and walk around and do everything and get mud everywhere. I just didn't want to deal with it. And it's a good thing because the power went out this morning here for (laughs) quite a few hours and we would have had to load everything in the pitch black dark there was no lights anywhere street lights house lights everything was out so i think i made the right call there and i i don't think that there was as many people that wanted to go to or that showed up to test at tulsa as not enough people showed up as they as a lot people a lot of people thought so Mm. um but i'm ready to go there's a few things that i need to do i filled the nitrous bottle actually went and got it filled up this morning so it's ready um i'm just kind of hanging out until uh that uh ihra classic race uh at xrp in a few weeks so were the guys able to recertify your bottle or they just filled it or what they just filled it they didn't ask i found the numbers stamped on the tank they didn't ask anything about it they just filled it and that was i was on my way how Uh, much per pound Eight bucks a pound. It cost me eighty-three bucks. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but how much horsepower is in that bottle? Well, for eighty-three dollars, a lot. Uh, <laughs> Uncle put some tune-ups in the grid when we were wired it a couple of years ago. That I was kind of looking at the other night, just kind of as a refresher. Um, but um, I should be good to go. There's a lot of things that I can dictate through the grid with timing, so all the timing maps we've already got in there. And so I don't know that I'll necessarily need to use it. I don't know who's going to show up to this IHRA race. I would assume it's probably going to be a 32 car field, but I don't know. I don't know how many people are going to show up to it, but if they Somewhere do, they I'll be had ready. a link for that entry for the different ones they were going to do. I forget if it's through that website, the folk or something like that, but yeah, um, I had seen where they were tracking sort of entries on, on that stuff. And, you know, it's the, the first year they're side. kind of bringing that back where they're taking sort of different tracks around the, the country and doing these classics where they've got the class racing kind of brought back into it. So that's cool that there's one close to you. I think the closest one that'll be here for me would be they're going to run one at Darlington. Yeah, that's so Darlington. I think the, the one that they had, they were um, maximizing entries was the bracket race. That's going to be there. I think there was 16 entries left to purchase the last time I checked. Um, I don't really, I don't think they have a max on top dragster or top sportsman or anything like that. At least that I've seen, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. They run a test session the Thursday before the race that I'm, I'm going to do, I'll probably throw a hundred shot at it just and see, <laughs> just see what it's, what it does. That's what's in there right now. And I don't know, we'll, we'll see, but I'm looking to have some fun. The car's ready to go. And, um, I, I think we'll be good. I think it's going to be fun. So I'm, I'm expecting big things. Nice. Just like you guys do. I, I don't go there to just screw around. I, I expect to win and, 
I, I, I feel pretty good about it. So, well, I came here to screw it around this time. I, no, <laughs> this time no, I came no, here to no. just screw around, uh, try to have a little more fun this time. The last time I was here, uh, in September, a labor day race, it was, it did not go so smoothly. So I, I spent a good portion of the off season, you know, chasing, chasing wires and trying to find things that were causing these intermittent little gremlins, like the car, not, uh, you know, the trans brake not working intermittently. So the car wouldn't back up or, uh, you know, I'd have these issues where the car would shift to high, almost like the second I left the line. So I was making like, I, I it would work. Everything would work fine. I'd go and when it was working, it's like, okay, I won that round. And I go back up there the next round and I'd let go of the button. All of a sudden I was on a like high gear only pass essentially. And it would run, you know, two tenths off kind of thing like no good i was dead as soon as i let let go of the button kind of started stuff, wasn't so. working right yeah and then there was that issue which you know i've i think i've said a number of times but what i mean the good thing about the problems are you find the problems and you can fix it and make it better and you learn something and what what i kind of learned with the whole starter thing because all last season i felt like i was chasing starters like i had multiple starters that were breaking they were noisy mm -hmm. uh, i had kickback and i just couldn't it was like why is this kicking back so bad i put start retard in it i didn't help and lo and behold when we finally you were trying to swap the starter quick for me while i was getting some other stuff checked and the the lug off the big battery cable to the starter just came right off in, in your hand and that's when we realized it just had been corroded for so long that it was barely, you know, and that when that happens, it's barely passing any current. So it 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 lit the light bulb off in my head because when I talked to the guys at Power Master about how I was like I broke some teeth off one, I needed a new clutch assembly, and they said, Yeah, you know, we fixed the one for you, but the tech noted here like some arcing within the solenoid. And that's indicative of a low voltage situation. I'm like, I'm always charging Dude. my battery. But then it's like, yeah. well, that's what it was. It was it was yeah. low current because the lug was corroded inside and you couldn't see inside the lug, but that, that's what happened until finally fell off. And then what I've what I've got now after breaking teeth off of flex plates because of kickback and stuff is that weak a weak starter will just break stuff it'll break teeth off your flex plate <laughs> it'll it, it it'll cause kickback and it, it'll make difficult starts but now i've got two batteries in the car a brand new flex plate and a new lug on the end of that thing and it spins over like a dream no problem so well you know the funny part about that was is you know it wasn't like we had time to do much with it because you were thrashing to get back up there so i took the lug and put it back down on the thing, put it on the ground and smashed it with a hammer to make it tight. Yeah. And it made me think of Matt's, you know, Texas diggers, dad, the transmission musician. He, <laughs> he used to say all the tools I ever needed was a hammer and a bigger hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so true, man. It's funny. And, and yeah, I just hope that, you know, I just want to have fun at this race and not have to deal with any thrash mode stuff because I've had plenty of that. Like the last time I was out with the car was the very end of December. It was like the New Year's race thing they did at Coastal uh, up there in Jacksonville. And I had teeth knocked out of the flex plate from this prior starter issue. But, you know, it was kind of like it always got past that spot. It It made some noise, but it always got past that spot until... Well, it finally didn't. And, you know, I'm up in like strapped into the car in the staging lanes, going to start it. It goes zzz, like, uh oh, it's That's of course that on that spot, right? It's on that spot. And you know, guys come over like, uh, we don't really know what to do. And I jump, I mean, I pop the belts, jump out of the, because I knew exactly what it was. And, they must have thought I was weird, but I just hop out, lay under the car, and with my hands, with my gloves on, literally pulled the flex plate, you know, to move the motor some. I'm like, oh, it'll start now. I hop back in, strap back in, and it fired up so I could make my my run. But 
it was a good thing then I lost that, I think, third round because I was going to have to fight that thing the rest of the day. That's no good. So, jeez. Yeah. That's yeah. not that's that's not the way to race. <laughs> well, now the points race you're at, they raced there today in Rockingham, yep. but that they no one gained any points for today. No, no, I think they're counting points. So last year, the series of points races was eight. So the the first race I attended last year was April. It was a weekend, a Saturday Sunday, and it got rain the first day. So they ended up doing a double points day on Sunday. <laughs> Excuse me. And then they had a three-day weekend race, Memorial Day weekend, and a three-day weekend race, Labor Day weekend. And so this year they decided, for whatever reason, that this first race would be a three-day weekend race also. So, yeah, I, I missed out on points today because I had to work and I wasn't going to take a day to get up here. So uh, no points for me today. But... You know, if I maybe get lucky like I did last year and have a good start, you know, my, my, I went into, I think I got knocked out in round five of the first race last year. So I gained some good points also because it was double points that put me in a good starting spot for yeah. the rest of the season. <laughs> but that's kind of what you're looking at with, uh, you know, getting to the finals there at the one race in Phoenix. Do you know where that puts you right now going into Pomona? I'm like tied for fourth in the division, but I actually, I was looking for something else because uh, I wanted to see what, what a, a car runs. And uh, so I was looking at points to see, well, what did this person do at this race? Did they go to that race? Uh, long story short, uh, I, set, I, I set like 10th nationally right now but I'm tied with like three or four other people for 10th <laughs> or tied. I should say if, if my last name didn't start with a W, I would be like seven. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> okay. Nice. But, um, you know, that doesn't mean much of anything right now. <laughs> um, because, you know, you got the whole season in front of you. Yeah. But, you know, I'm only two points races in, but I'd like to be able to do, you know, fairly decent at these next couple of races just so that I can stay up there. It'd be good to finish in the top 10 of the division. It would be good to finish in the top 50 nationally. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. My biggest thing is when I go for a motor rebuild in the middle of the season if i run into issues trying to get parts because sometimes you got to wait months and months and months for parts i can put my other motor back in and run some races but it's not going to be able to qualify in some settings so you know that that could be difficult trying to run the other motor but until i get the other one back is there something like, let's say you go and have a stellar weekend at Pomona and, you know, national points wise, I don't know how that works with NHRA. If, if you say, well, this really propels me to a good starting spot nationally, maybe there's an opportunity here with like running Sonoma, Vegas, you know, you've got a few national events on your Western circuit there, but how many can you claim or like if you thought, oh, I got a shot at like a top 10, top five, I'm in contention. What does that mean? Like how far would you have to travel? Are you going to have to go all the way back to, you know, the no. East Coast or you, no, you no, only no. got to, you only, they only take your top, you know, eight national, five national. For events. national events, you can only count uh, three, your best three out of five. So the first five that you run, that's, that's it. So I run Pomona, Phoenix, Vegas National, then uh, Sonoma, and say the World Finals, that's your max. That's five. Okay. So it's the best three out of those five. For division, it's, you can run as many as eight, and the best five out of that eight. And you can run two out of your division that can count 
So there's only seven divisional races within our division. So you can go out of division for, to pick up at least one more. You don't have to do any of that if you don't want to, but uh, that's if you're really chasing points. And I haven't really been chasing points in quite a while. So, you know, and I'm not necessarily inclined to do so. It all depends on how things kind of go. But there's just a lot of unknowns at this point. But I can say anytime I've run the maximum amount of races that are allowable for the division, I've always finished somewhere in the top 10. I think, I think the I, last time I ran my full allotment of races, well, just the seven within the division, I finished ninth. So, you know, if I run all of them, there's a good possibility I can make the top 10, but that's, that's just, Hey, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Well, that's cool. Cause I, I wondered about that. Like, Hey, if you're, if you're really off and running at a world title, how much travel do you have to put in? You know, would you have to go all the way back to the U S nationals kind of thing, but you can stay within your region, your division, essentially, it sounds like yeah. with enough, uh, yeah. national events. That's great. Well, what, what, what maybe throws you off a little bit on that is take, take as an example, uh, the top two finishers, Clint Giese, who finished second, who's out of Washington state and Vince Mussolino, who's out of New York. Uh, he came all the way out to the West coast, went to Texas and did all this wild travel because they don't get started on the East Coast until fairly late. And so he, you know, was doing really well by mid-season and then realized, hey, if I want to chase this thing, I've got to go far distances because all the West Coast stuff has already been done and this, mm -hmm. that, the other thing. So that's how you get caught up in that. Same thing with Geesey. He, he won early and was doing really well and had a comfortable points lead but then he realized hey i gotta pick up another national because being in the northwest is kind of one of the worst places in the country to be because you got to travel such far distances to go to your own division <laughs> stuff and he went all the way to minnesota to run another national and it paid off for him he won it mm. so you know he was doing well and he was just aced out at the very last by Mussolino. I felt really bad for Clint. I mean, that was tough to be leading three quarters of the year or something like that, and then get aced out right at the last. But you have to hand it to Vince. I mean, he went to Dallas and did well and uh, came out to the West Coast and didn't do so well in Vegas, but, you know, he, he went the amount of rounds he needed to go and the world finals and pulled it off well i would i i there's no way i'm doing that kind of stuff <laughs> well maybe this uh next time here at pomona you won't have to race so late it seems like the last time you were there you had a, yourself a, a night race uh, that was kind of unusual well that's that's like the nature of um, surviving a national event you know, at the world finals, that was like running uh, first round over and over and over again. Because, you know, we got bumped around on our schedule, which you typically do. But like we ran first round on, uh, I'd have to look at my record again. But I think we ran first round on Friday in the morning or before noon and then we didn't run again until the next day and we ran another what second round which was like a first round in the morning and then we didn't run third round until like late in the day and then you know you pick up the next day and you're running like what feels like a first round again so <laughs> there was 
I think there was no less than like at least eight or nine hours uh, between rounds. There was like no getting in a rhythm. There was yes. no consistency in the weather aspect of it or track conditions because you're racing to qualify before the pros hit the track. And then when the pros hit the track, it completely changes the nature of the track because of the way they prep it and everything else. And, uh, it, mm. Mm. You know, if, it's you hard to survive, if you can survive and win a national event, my hat's off to you because it's, it's a marathon. I didn't follow it too closely, but I have seen little bits of it online that there is some renewed unrest among some of the sportsmen racers from Gainesville. I guess there was a couple of times where, um, you know, they'd call a class up and maybe they felt NHRA felt the racers were coming up quick enough. And then the guys that came up there, they like sent them back like, nope, you didn't come up here soon enough. You're done. And I don't know, they had, of course, rain issues and stuff. And, you know, NHRA is trying to match up their TV time and all of that. So yeah, uh, it, it, it seemed like there's a lot of grumbling coming from some sportsman racers that were at Gainesville, I guess. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of up to the lane master and uh, Mike Rice, who's sitting up in the tower uh, as race director. Uh, if he, you know, if let's say you're late to make the call, if they start running your class, you better be up there before it ends. Because if there's a, a large enough gap from the last car they ran, whatever's behind that, and they say, okay, well, we're going to the next class, then you lose. I mean, that's, you just better get up there, you know, um, uh, one of the things I really dislike about national events is when they call you up there and you get up there and then you sit there and then because of an oil down or some issue or just they shouldn't have even called you, um, they end up sending you back because they have to make their TV schedule for the pros. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. National events are... I was, to do. I was talking to Eric about that the other day of we're just kind of what I was wanting to really do and what the work schedule allows me to do would be if I could do five or six races a year, that would be cool. I've never actually raced myself at a national event. That would be cool if I could do that just to say that I've done it, but I'm not going to be sad if I don't do that because I know what kind of a zoo it is and especially hearing how it is when you go, it's like, I don't know if I want to really get involved in that. It doesn't <laughs> sound like too much fun. <laughs> you know, uh, that's just me though. It, you know, the, the thing about national event is like, if they're fairly close to you, it's just another race. It's a five round race, which right. is nice. You only have to go five rounds to make it to the final. <clears throat> Right. Uh, the money is not very good. <laughs> uh, it's uh, I'll give you an example because I just actually saw this today. Uh, if you run the U.S. Nationals, which is probably one of the biggest marathon races you could possibly ever run, discount all the flings and all that kind of stuff. But uh, they pay like fifteen hundred dollars to win top dragster, top sportsman. Wow! Jeez. And Good. they pay three thousand dollars to win for super gas and super comp. Now, there's only a thirty-two car field for qualified field for top sportsman, top dragster, and there's like a hundred and twenty-eight cars for super gas and super comp. But still, man, the fact that they can't up their game some and pay more than that a divisional pays more than the u.s nationals <laughs> wow. now there's contingency you know i get all that kind of stuff but i'm talking about what nhra would pay mm. and it's just not very good yeah all right genuine racing noises Woo. oh yeah you hearing some of that 
they are currently running pro. I don't know. Like I said, I don't 11th, know how many cards they got left, but wow. they're still running. So I get the feeling there was a pause in the action today, maybe from a passing shower. But, you know, kind of <laughs> the weather that you got out there the other day in Texas, you know, all of the rain that dumped on you kind of was a good thing for us because there wasn't much of it left by the time it got out here you know the forecast at the beginning of the week was like eh, it's gonna rain friday saturday maybe sunday but as the week went on and the, the storm system kind of lost its energy it really uh there's barely any rain today and i don't think we'll see anything tomorrow or sunday fingers crossed but the chance is pretty darn low so Now, one of the things that uh, Matt and I were talking about, and maybe we'll we'll put on here uh, and see where we end up, is a reaction time challenge. So we got talking about this initially because you know you uh, Matt was maybe going to race this weekend, maybe I was going going to as well, and you got Pomona coming up. Hey, it's a mini digger. Mini digger. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but seeing as how we all are probably going to get three I'm, runs like as at a minimum, like uh, I'll get a time run tomorrow, first round. And even if I lose, I've got first round Sunday. So I've got at least three runs I get to make this weekend at a minimum. So I figure if we all could go off that, if we all probably are going to get at least three runs, uh, we can, we can average out our first, the first three runs we make, uh, for a race, our next race coming up here, and see who's got the the best average on the starting line. That'll be a fun competition. Yeah, I'm, I think that'd be really cool. I'll have I'll be the last one to go, but uh, I'm I'm game for it. I'll be going first, so I'll be probably setting a pretty low bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Occasionally, I can have some sharp lights, but we'll see. I don't. I don't typically hit my best lights during qualifying and stuff. I got to be a little more amped up when it's. Well, <laughs> we could we could adjust it. We could say the first however many com competition runs. We could certainly stretch it out over a whole season, but I figured for the sake of fairness, we somehow had to match it up that we all had equal opportunity at runs or something like that. So somebody wasn't making five runs versus three runs or something well do i get any kind of handicap for being almost twice as old as you guys <laughs> no you have twice as much experience <laughs> we get the hand we should get the handicap you've had you've seen the tree how many times more than we have <laughs> that doesn't mean anything uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything man. <laughs> there are, you know these guys these young guns come out there and they're double o constantly somebody just like, about 30 I'm minutes ago was quadruple zero <laughs> am i fully staged is that light on <laughs> oh okay oh did i hear that guy go i better go <laughs> just just keep in the back of your mind double o shit show has eyes everywhere you got to be very careful anymore <laughs> looking over your back who is it <laughs> yeah well as long as you're not dragging your battery charger to the staging lanes right or <laughs> uh you know taking the stripe by 300 feet because the other guy broke <laughs> you're probably safe but if you do something that egregious you can probably bet it's going to end up there yep Yep, that's uh, no for I don't even know how many runs I've made down the track in 52 years of going down the track, but uh, you know, part of seeing so much and um, having some level of respect for what other people do or what other people have suffered, especially suffered. I'll give you a good example, uh, Tanya Green. Uh, Monty Green's wife got run over, backed over. He backed over her um, when she was adjusting the wheelie bars and, you know, broke ribs and messed her up pretty good. 
Uh, she didn't spend but a couple of days in the hospital, but she's got a lot of recovery. And I hope she does well. But it's just like, man, I don't care what happened to your weekend or like, okay, I lost by a thou. I lost the final. Hey, I did great. I didn't have broken ribs, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it, you get to the point where it's like, hey, if you can go and have fun and survive without blowing up stuff and all that kind of stuff, then, hey, take it as a big win, you know, just, hey, it's great. <laughs> Enjoy it. Because I would say for many years, uh, and I don't, I, I don't even know if I can count the decades, but, um, you know, at times when I would be out traveling and racing and sometimes it felt more like a job than it was going out and having fun. You know, you're just so serious about it and uh, you don't go out to have fun. You go out to do well. Okay, so the price you pay is that, well, yeah, I I can say I did pretty well at times, but, you know, I didn't exactly have a party atmosphere or, you know, it, it enjoy it like some people do. So, you know, but I don't know, at, at some point I would say probably after I crashed my 2003 car, you know, after that, it was like, Hey, you know, if you're going to go back out to the racetrack, you better be enjoying it or don't go you know, stop doing it if you don't enjoy it. And so I just went out with more of an attitude of, Hey, I don't want to break stuff. Just like what you were saying, Eric, it's like, I don't, I just want to go out and run my car and have a good time. And if I win any rounds, okay, that's a plus, but go out and enjoy, you know, yep. take it, take each run for what it is. Hey, that's fun. I enjoyed that. You know, like the way the car's launching, whatever. Um, you can't guarantee, I mean, as the NHRA announcer, uh, Alan says, you know, it's, it's a right time, right kind of sport. You see it all the time. Guys, you know, break off the line or something like that. And the other guy keeps running down there, and breaks out, or uh, even in the pro ranks, uh, somebody puts down a good enough, package of reaction time and et that they could have beat everybody else in that round but yeah. lost because they got matched up against somebody who had just a little bit better package yeah you know that gets really frustrating when and you know as example jr todd he, he just got lucky in the gator nationals round after round everybody had a problem against them uh i can't quote you any numbers but I think he only made one three second pass in eliminations. It's all on how you pull into the lanes, I guess. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, it just is what it is. This is a very humbling sport. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so, Matt, you just got to get out there and enjoy it. Yep, absolutely. Don't worry about, you know, all the other stuff that goes along with it. Just go out and enjoy the ride. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to getting this uh, nitrous bottle hooked up and feeling this thing leave the starting line. Well, it... don't forget that motor was built to run on nitrous, and you're just running it on motor, and so it's <laughs> kind of like, when is he going to spray me? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably really going to like it, right? Because you know, I guarantee you, even in the eighth mile, if you spray a hundred, you're going to pick up. 15 hundreds to two tenths of the eighth mile. Yeah. Wow. After you really said that, I just, I just kind of took a step back and said, well, yeah, it's not built for all motor. It's built for spray. And that's why I built it that way. And I need to start doing it. That's what it's built for. It can handle it. So we'll get into that here in a couple of weeks and uh, that'll be fun. I'll be posting numbers and time slips and videos and, double o shit shows and everything else <laughs> i guess mine if i should share one oh if the camera will pick it up really well that thing on my nose 
is uh, the other day I walked into the cable that comes down to the back door of my trailer, <laughs> clotheslined wow. myself. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, I, the safest place I can be at the racetrack is in the car. <laughs> Everything else is trying to kill me from, you know, like wrenches and cables on doors. <laughs> well, you didn't tell us anything about a wrench story. Do fill us in on that. Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, just slipping a wrench, cracking a knuckle. I mean, I've done that. I don't know how many times. Harry from Home Alone getting all the wrenches dumped on his head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's why there's those signs, busted knuckle garage. Yeah. Right now, my hands are about as clean as I've seen them because I haven't <laughs> had the car here to touch it. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, well, we'll be watching you on uh, NHRA TV next week, and uh, I look forward to that. I love watching my family race, and uh, I, I really I'm look, I'm excited about that. It gives me something to look forward to next week, and even tomorrow, I'm trying to watch you on the, uh, Rockingham's YouTube channel. I'll be. Uh, I hope they post something. <laughs> Excuse me, but I I saw they shared that recently. I was like, oh, they got a channel, but. I know they have a, a tower cam because I've been up in the tower and the guy announcing, uh, he's got it right there. It's, there's a camera pointing down the track. So, I mean, they have a feed. I don't know. It'd be cool if they turned it on. Yeah. That looks like a really cool track to race at. So enjoy well, it. Just and it's neat that they've been putting a lot of improvements into it. The new owners who took it over, I think last year or something, they have really worked closely with the county and have gotten i don't know if they've gotten grants or funding but i mean they're they added a bar onto the concession stand so right. you know there was like music and people hanging out at this new bar uh while the racing was going on and um you know they've again gone over the track it's been just over a year i think since they redid like 800 feet of the track and because it's they want it to be right. <laughs> Excuse me. They, uh, you know, have come come out and smooth any of like the joints that have curled or anything as the concrete cures and all of that. So it's supposed to be very, uh, very smooth now. And they've even done work in the shutdown. So less bumps down there in the shutdown. Uh, paving of a lot of the, the kind of secondary roads through the pit areas needed some repaving. I think they've gotten after that. Uh, so yeah, they're just, they're doing a lot here, which is great. You know, if you're a racer, you're coming to a facility. It's nice to see them putting money back into the facility. That's great. Absolutely. Agreed. There isn't a track in the country that could benefit from more asphalt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tulsa and Ennis are two of them that need to do something about that. Love the tracks, but anything off the track? Nope. <sighs> Potholes. It's like driving on roads. Oh, yeah. When we went to the Enos, you know, the Dallas track to pick up the car you bought. Yeah. Couldn't believe how gross the pit area was. It's pretty bad. Yeah. What a mess. Yeah. You know, you think, oh, that's a super track. Billy Myers built a really nice track. Man, the pit area was a shithole. Right. <laughs> Reminds me of Bakersfield, basically, is, is what it is. Tulsa has asphalt, but it's got potholes everywhere. <laughs> oh. Another another improvement they've done here at Rockingham, they added, they had some, but they've added a bunch more. You know, they, they charge for them, of course, but you can, if you've got an RV and you want to pay for it, you've got full hookups here for your RV. So you get power, water, and sewer. And just like that's really things. nice. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's that's classic, man. Well, just remember this weekend you're racing. We're not enjoy it like your dad said, but yet be confident. You got to believe in yourself, but you can still have fun while doing all that. Yeah, that's the goal this time around is to is to have fun. So, yeah, uh, hopefully we we accomplish that goal if nothing else. But I'll let you know how it goes. And uh, I don't know if I'm out early. Maybe we'll uh, stream a little bit of the racing action from here. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, keep Go. us informed of what's going on. Go yep. get it, man. You got this. Yeah, all right. Thanks, guys. And uh, thanks, everybody, for checking out some more Diggers TV.